I'm ready when you are. Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2022 season as we look ahead to the Betfred Super League round seven clash against the Leeds Rhinos this Friday evening at Headingley, whatever they want to call it these days, stadium. Uh, I don't even know what it is. Oh, Emerald Headingley. Is it still that? I think, it is. Yeah, I think it's still Emerald. Uh, before we get on to that, Kev, um, last weekend, are you still waxing lyrical about our wonderful trip to Whitehaven? Yes. Yeah, loved it. In fact, got myself a little drink in my stackable cup. You were meant to Best return pound. that, Kevin. <laughs> Best pound I spent up there. I tell you what, we were chatting about these during the game. Do the do the Saints' greatest ever team in these? You can you can just buy your, your disposable ones, but for a quid or so extra, if the club did these, make them collectible, release them over the course of a season, well, a couple of seasons probably. Tell you what, they go down a storm. People would would buy them and take them back and and get the get the nail or the, the whatever filled up in these. Yeah, great idea. Anyway, this is speech on behalf of Whitehaven Rugby League Football Club. Well done. That's the Whitehaven women's team, I think you'll find. It's, um, yeah, sponsored by the uh, the ladies committee. I think you'll find it is. There we go. Um, yeah, the, I, thought, I thought the away day up in Whitehaven was fantastic. I think it's one of the best we've had in a couple of years. I think you can go back to Good Friday 2019, add that in there as well. But uh, not really enjoyed it. New new ground for me to tick off personally. I know people have been up there in the past, but fantastic place, yeah. Interesting to see that we've got so many Cumbrian fans as well. Um, obviously, yeah. you, you hear about them, you see them on occasionally on social media, but quite surreal to be walking round the town and find people saying hello to us from up in Cumbria who watch us. On Red V. So if you're up in Cumbria watching us, hello. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. But no, it, it was interesting to see, obviously, with them not having a Super League team in Whitehaven, uh, they obviously follow Whitehaven and they all pretty much have a, a surrogate side, don't they, to follow. And there was uh, quite a few Saints fans, a few Leeds fans and one Wigan fan. Yeah. Um, I think you, you said it as we were walking through the town as well you've almost got a free hit of who you can pick um, you, you, listen you can be a glory hunter or you can pick someone whose colours you like or you can pick, pick whatever you want up there um, I think it's great that they get behind the local team as well and they're not just fixated on, on a team up in Super League um, but yeah it was it was good to see so many uh, Cumbrian Saints fans up there and, and good on them it's just a shame that when it comes to the Cumbria in Super League, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered before I think we got a team up there. Yeah, I think we need a boat that goes from Liverpool Ferry Terminal and, and cuts the corner rather than having to do the 140 mile yeah. car journey that takes 80 miles as the crow flies. But very scenic on the way as well. Um, yeah. We did have a question on our, on our Twitter, didn't we, Kev? Um, which I think you replied to, um, asking whether Super League teams should join in round five rather than round six. And your reply was? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, I said I'm open to the lower league teams getting a home tie. I'm not necessarily stuck on that idea as a, as a 100%. I'm open to the idea. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't see why we can't go in a little bit earlier. It's a good chance for you to get some of the younger or the, the uh, peripheral players in your squad a game. Um, if a club can manage their squad correctly, which is all part of a coach's remit, um, I see no problem with adding the extra game. See, my issue with it is there's already enough games for, for the players already and it's player welfare. And I almost Managing think squad. that... I almost think if you go in around earlier, I think if we have a look at some of the teams who were maybe in round five, um, if I pull it up, if I can, let's have a look who was in round five last time out. Um, do, do, do. We'll get there in the end. 
Well, just while you're doing that, uh, to answer your uh, too many games, manage your squad, rotate your squad. Um, I, I spoke, like, there's a, a guy at my work who uh, regularly says that players should only play a set amount of games uh, in the season if there's player welfare issues. You've got a squad of 25 to 30. Some of them players don't make an appearance. Well, you've got them in your squad. There's a chance they're going to be used. So the perfect opportunity to start start playing about with your squad. Does that then make it a little bit, make the gap narrow a little bit? Would you see a couple more shocks? Potentially. Okay, there was Bradford Lee, Whitehaven York, Batley Fev, Barrow, Workington, Crusaders and Sheffield. Now, I almost say coming at round six because winning that fifth round game is almost like getting to a cup final with the chance of playing that Super League opposition. If you just automatically allow them all to, to be at that stage, does it quickly lose its novelty value maybe a little bit when you basically see eight ties, essentially get eight ties or so getting played where the teams all get spanked? Um, um, I, I think you, you, you say spanked. I think, I think that rugby league fans especially are so hung up on blowout scores more than any other sport. Um, and you know what, as I say, if you start playing about with your squad and you're not playing your, your full squad, it does bring that into focus, or I'd say that brings it into focus a little bit more. But I almost think that the reason Saturday was so good was because it doesn't happen that often. Um, yeah, I get that. If it happened every year and we were playing Whitehaven or Workington or Batley every year, the novelty quickly wears off and, and then you find yourself getting attendance at Warrington levels. Very true. That's then then there's another um there's another chat there and that's um <laughs> sorry I'm just giggling at the Warrington levels. I don't um, you know I don't want to go too much into Warrington but oh my <laughs> god 2700 for yeah. a game against Super League opposition is do you know what? I, can't, I don't. I, I, there should be a, a thesis, not a thesis, a thesis, a thesis with a th produced on why that crowd was so low. Because even as somebody who isn't exactly a Warrington fan, yeah, I can't explain that crowd on. Sunday. No, it's yeah, it's yeah. Well, that's it. But the, that then goes into more. How can we get numbers of the the Challenge Cup up? I'm not entirely, I'm not a massive fan of just two weeks in between rounds. Well, for the sixth round, when the Super League teams know they're going to be in it, there should be a £15 charge automatically added to every season ticket and it then gets included in your season tickets, whether you're home or away. Yeah, no problem with that at all. Um, but it's, I'm not, I'm not a fan of like two weeks in between games as well. Um, I would make them so they are probably the first weekend in the month. And do them over, if it's do them over a couple of months, it's do them over a couple of months. Um, just so you know when it's coming, and it's after the majority of people's paydays as well. So they could just walk up and, and stop this thing of um, making the walk-up fan pay more for a ticket. Yeah, I, I, don't, mean, oh, I, I don't think it makes people buy earlier. Yeah. If you're going to go, you're going to go. Um, yeah. When you, when you talk about you're not a fan of the two weeks between tyres, it just brings me to a tweet that we, we received from Ray K1010 on Twitter a couple of hours ago. And he put, spreading the game going well, you now need to be a mixture of Michael Palin and Bear Grylls to get to a cup match. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, which obviously yeah. brings us on to drawing Catalan away in the next round. Yeah. Um, with... Only what is it? Twelve days notice from the actual date of the cup tie being announced to the actual game. Um, it's left fans who can afford to go and get the time off at such short notice, doing a little bit of a scramble around to get there. And there's no, and I think this is the biggest issue. And I think I put this out on Twitter as well with Toulouse and Catalan in Super League. There needs to be more of a direct route from the northwest, ideally. Um, yeah. But obviously, a couple. Of, there's only really a couple of routes that we've seen for the cup tie. Um, there's the the Stansted route with a six o'clock flight on the Saturday morning back to Birmingham on the Sunday, or go from Birmingham but have to do Wednesday to Sunday. And 
for a lot, it's making it inaccessible. Almost. Yep. Luckily for most, it's going to be on TV, so we'll, they'll get to see the game. But it just robs fans the opportunity to get down there and, and support their team. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. There we go. You can tell that do this all in one take, can't you? Um, it does. And that's why I'm not necessarily a fan of, of, of the short term round in between cup ties as well. Um, it, 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 you're right, it doesn't give people a chance. And then, as, as that tweet has said, you've got to be you've got to be prepared to travel to get the good flight out of here. I'm surprised that that there isn't something, it probably all is in with cost, obviously, but I'm surprised that with the majority of the game concentrated into the M62 corridor, that there isn't a flight from somewhere a little bit closer, a little bit more mainstream straight in. Um, yeah. So Just want to go back. To make that six o'clock flight from Stansted, Kev, there's quite a few who are going to be taking the eight o'clock train from Warrington. Yeah. Um, and again, that Warrington train probably have more on it than was in the stadium. Yeah, possibly so. Probably more, possibly. Probably more Saints fans on that train than was in that yeah. stadium. Uh, yeah, probably. I just want to go back to something just before we move on and start looking at the squad and all that. Uh, when you say about coming in earlier, in 96 and 97, we actually came in in the fourth round. Uh, we could have been drawn. 97, I've got up here. We could have been drawn against Carlisle Border Raiders, Dudley Hill, um, let's see who else Hunslet Hawks, Lancashire Lynx Sheffield Eagles, Swinton Lions Barrow Braves Whitehaven Warriors Workington Town um, other small teams Workington like, Town still Super League then Kev yeah I think they were other small teams like Warrington um, and we actually got drawn against Wigan um, so listen it's been done before. There's no reason why it can't be done again. And somebody actually tweeted and said, there's no way that you can do it by having um, all the lower league teams at home and making all Super League teams away. It's got to be a cup draw. Well, I'm sorry, but the Champions League don't play teams against each other. They pick and choose where, who's going to play who and where they're going to play if it so needs to be. There's no reason why we can't. It's absolutely... That's, that's easily done, isn't it? You put the 12 Super League teams... Literally, they're already drawn away in twelve slots, and then no, you just pick no, a lower. No. Then you just pick a lower no. league team out. No, no, you still draw it out, so you can still get your Saints Wigan. You can still get your Catalan Warrington in in there, but as well, whenever you pick one out, so if you pick Saint Helens out first, and then they pick Whitehaven, you know that that tie is going to get reversed. That's all you have to do. You can still have your big games. You can still have your all Super League games, but you can. You just reverse the tie. It's I, to... I do it differently. I, I would seed, seed the Super League team so they don't face each I, other in that round. I've no problem with that. But also, I've no problem with some of the bigger teams knocking each other out. And potentially, listen, I want to see Saints win the Cup every single year. But if it means we get a new name on the trophy, so be it. And if we can't win it, why team? Yes, why not? Okay. Uh, we will get on to, to Leeds on Friday evening. Um, interesting stats, Kev. How many times have Leeds beat us in the last 10? None. Once. Once. And that was the 10th one. So if we beat them on Fridays, we've beat them in the last 10. The last, the last Leeds victory against Saints was 28-20 at Saints in 2018, March 18th. So what, four years since? Um, and the last home victory for the Rhinos actually came in a 16-14 Super 8 win on the 18th of August, 2017. 18th of August, 2017. I think I was flying to New York that day. Oh, there we go. But yeah, since we've won our last three away meetings uh, against the Rhinos, uh, the head-to-head -head record, John Saints have won 41, Leeds have won 32 of the contest. Did, you, did John Wilkin get sent off in that? I think so, yeah. And it was it was when he wasn't it when he stayed down in uh, when the the Leeds player stayed down injured and he went to the video and he and he did him off that. I, I can't. Well, I don't know. I just remember getting angry uh, text messages off you when I landed at JFK. <laughs> Not that like you to be on. John Wilkin, red card Leeds, twenty seventeen. 
just while you're looking at that, there is only one change to that squad. Um, not like for like either. Regan Grace drops out. Alex but you Walden say that, him. Kevin. You say that. <laughs> no, How do. fun would it be to see Alex Walmsley line up on the wing? He'd just be running it back in like Tommy Makers and Dustin, wouldn't he? <laughs> I bet he'd relish that opportunity. Very good. Um, James Roby in the picture. He will make it 500 appearances in a Saints shirt on Friday evening, joining the elite club of Kel Coslett, Eric Chisnell and Billy Benyon of players who've made 500 for the club. He'll be 14 behind Billy Benyon, 23 behind Eric Chisnell. So if we progress in the cup, I'm, he may have a chance of reaching that figure. And he'll just be eight short, potentially, of Kel Coslis, assuming he plays in every game. Very good. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that has to be the reason he stays another year, to break the record. <laughs> the third to be broken. Unbelievable. He's been an unbelievable player for us over the years. Absolutely wonderful. You never see anything but at least seven and a half, eight out of ten from him every single week. And that's when he's having a bad week. You're getting your seven and a half, eight out of ten. When you see him drop a ball a couple of times, you're like, I can't believe Roby's knocked on there. He never knocks on. Um, he used to be like Paul Wellens uh, underneath the bomb. You just knew it was going to be all right, and you knew knew he'd beat the first man. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot that can be said about James Roby, but it, he's going to go down rightly so as one of the greatest players ever to have pulled on a Saints jersey. Indeed. Um, Alex Walmsley back into the squad, as is Morgan Knowles. Um, but Will Hopwarty, Matty Lees, Sion Matautia and James Bell all out through injury. As is Regan Grace, um, who obviously made his first appearance of the season in the Challenge Cup um, at Whitehaven. Picked up a knock, went off injured, doesn't make the squad this week. I said when we were having the conversation earlier, Kev, that uh, for me... That means I wouldn't play him against Catalan next week either. Um, I just think he's a little bit short of sharpness and fitness and it'd be too big a risk. Um, and then obviously I know you've got Wigan and, and Huddersfield and the likes coming up after that, but the league games and you can afford, if you, listen, if something didn't go right and you lost the game, you've lost two points. The Catalan game, I think you need to be firing on all cylinders. Uh, that's fair enough. I don't think we kind of play players unless they're 100%. I think we've seen that with leaving Will Hopoati out earlier in the season, uh, leaving Morgan Knowles out um, last week. Just there's, there's no point risking him. Um, so it's I can I can see him having another couple of weeks off. Um, if he came back in against Wigan, I'd have no problems about his fitness. Um, we know that the club does the due diligence and we always say the strength and condition is the best in the land. Um, so I've absolutely no doubts that they'll bring him back at the right time. Yeah, I know you, you were talking at the weekend that you'd like to see Ben Davis um, getting a run in the centres um, over Conrad Harrell. Uh, I don't think he'd been too enamoured in, in his last couple of performances. Um, but in reality, can you see that happening, especially going back to Leeds? Um, for me, Davis, Sim, Royal and Benison. Well, sorry, Sim will probably make the squad, won't he? Um, Sim will play. Instead of Regan Gracie, he'll play on the wing. Um, but who misses out? Sam Royal, John Benison. Maybe Jake Wingfield and Ben Davis? Um, I think Davis, uh, Royal, Benison, and either one of Dan Norman or Kyla Moore will okay. miss out. Um, I think that you've still got a, a big enough bench there. If, if Alex plays, then you're probably starting somebody like Alex and Louis, aren't you? Then you've got Parsi, um, who could play on the bench. Wingfield can do a stint up front, but he's also a back rower. Um, yeah, I've just said, well, I'll do the four names I've written down, Davis, Benningson, Royal and, well, Norman or and more. I See, I, I, I'm torn on Dan Norman, you see, because I think he's played well the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah. I think he's took his opportunity. But then if you're looking to prepare for Catalan, I don't think you, he makes the 17 against Catalan at this moment in time. I don't think he's done enough against top opposition in, in at the moment to, to make that side. So for me, I think Amor makes. I think Amor makes the seventeen. I think Amor can do more minutes. I think that's that's the thing with him. But it's it's almost one of them that you play week to week to week. 
So who is the right person for this week? Is it Dan Norman? Because if you think it's Dan Norman, especially, obviously, if Alex Walmsley misses out, then both of them play. Yeah. But um, you think that if Dan, if Christian Wolf thinks Dan Norman's the right fella for this week, he'll put him in. And he won't. He'll have half an eye on the week after. But it's about winning this game first. I think that's just the attitude that he always takes. We play week by week by week. If, he, if it's the right team, that's what he thinks he goes with. Going back to uh, Ben Davis, as I say, I can't see Ben getting a nod above Conrad. All I want to see from Conrad is a little bit, is a bit more awareness defensively. Leeds fans said this um, when we signed him that that he was great going forward defensively, probably was the weaker part of, of the two. Um, I just want to see him kind of get that Saints ethos of, of the Toulouse game, there was one and he was just jogging back. Listen, if you gassed, you gassed. But you've got to put that effort in. You've got to show that effort uh, against Whitehaven. I think there was a, there was a silly tackle um, when one of the players was right by touch. He goes in a little bit over the top, gives the penalty away, puts us back under pressure. I'm not I, enamoured and stuff like that. I was that. shocked, Kev, that that never got pulled by the disciplinary. Yes, same, same. And, and that's probably, you know what, if that's on the BBC, it probably is rather than being on the sportsman. Uh, and it possibly being like a one camera angle, so they can't really tell. Um, yeah, listen, it just needs to be smarter. It would with seven rounds in now. Yeah, he has missed through through being banned, but with seven rounds in now, you should be kind of hitting your straps to your fitness. He seems great for the squad. We were at a forum with him, absolutely top lad. He's pro- he is great for the squad. I'd imagine that when Will Hopwati comes in he will drop out for a couple of weeks and have a couple of weeks off. And we will play the one to five as our, our back five. Um, I just want to see that a little bit more from him. Um, it's hard to be ultra critical when you've only lost one game. But listen, these are the standards that we're used to at Saints, yeah. aren't we? Um, and, 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 I think, actually, and I think you're not, you're not wanting to drop someone for drop and seek, you, no. you're doing it to promote a younger player to give them yeah. a, an opportunity because at the end of the day, do you know what, with this squad and I'm, I'm sure they're all aware themselves, if you're not performing, then there's there's somebody with with a, a mark on your back wanting to take your place Yeah, well that's it, as you say like you're coming up after Catalan, we've got Wigan then we've got Huddersfield away on the Monday, then we've got Castleford away on the Friday after that and then we've got a, a week to get ready for Salford. It's usually the Castleford game, that, you, like the third game of them, that's the flattest one. And that's where we may see a couple of changes. We may see um, lads getting the chance and the likes of Ben Davis getting a, a bit more game time, possibly Sam Royal getting a bit more game time um, because of that kind of how your games are concertinaed up. But you're right, I'm not saying it because... I'm saying I don't like Conrad Harrell and I want him dropped. I'm saying I've seen a couple of errors. Is there someone who can do that job better than him? Yeah. And and how do we find that out without playing him? Fair enough. Uh, Shall we move on to to an awful side? (laughs) That's not Warrington. Not this week. It's the Leeds Rhinos. You're saying that now, and all of a sudden they're going to turn into prime like 2008 Leeds, aren't they? Now you've said that. Who Leeds or Warrington? <laughs> Leeds, not Warrington. Yeah. Um, um, at what point does that number eleven regret moving there? I don't think he will. I think he just listen. He needs games for him. He needs to get used to how they play compared to how we played. And as we said, oh, I, I, love, I, love the, I love the little bit of grub in him, but he needs to learn. And we said this last year, he needs to learn how to use that to his advantage rather than disadvantage in his team. So him getting sent off on his debut, I mean, to anybody with a Eyes in the red and a working brain, you could see that that was going to be a red card the way that he went in on Widder. I don't care if people say he was going down. He's come a long way and connected with the head. It was it was just an idiotic move. 
There's a great player in there, though. There's a great player that Christian Wolf said he was filthy about James Bentley moving, but it's his childhood club. The club he's supported as a lad. Can you blame him for going? No, it's a short career. And if he wants to pull on a lead shirt, then fair enough. It's just at the moment, you have a look at the team and they're missing quite a few. I think Brad Dwyer is a big miss for them. He usually goes well against us, um, as usually does Ash Handley, usually gets a try against us as well. But they're just missing quite a few players there. And I think they're missing... They're missing something in the recruitment that kind of... You see, like, they've had so many coaches. They've had Kevin Sinfield in charge. I think he was in charge of recruitment over there. And you just think that every time you change your coach, you probably put yourself back a couple of seasons because we work under the salary cap. And it's not as easy as, say, a coach... Go, a, 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 in football, a manager coming in and saying, I want five players. You've got to move these on in, in rugby because you can't afford more players. You can't have a squad of 35 full-time professionals because of because of the constraints of the salary cap, not unless you're paying them all 20 grand a year and they're all kids, because you, you're just not going to sign players like that. Um, so they need to write themselves, because otherwise they're going to the leads that, well, that weren't very good in, like, probably when I started watching rugby. A long time ago. Yep. Um, obviously, Jamie Jones Buchanan, Easy for you to say, is now in charge of the squad on a temporary basis. Um, he's made one change to the squad from last week. Brad Dwyer misses out through, sus uh, through suspension and is joined on the sidelines by Zane Tetavano, who's completing his two-game ban also. Uh, and the youngster, Max Simpson, makes the squad for the first time. Um, uh, if we're being hand on heart here, our lead's in a relegation battle. At a minute, yeah. At, at a minute, yeah. You, you can't listen. Will they get relegated? I wouldn't put. I wouldn't put your money on it. Let's go, I go. wouldn't. The well, question is, Kev, if Leeds were to finish bottom, what would be funny? Them actually being relegated or Super League saving them and keeping them up? What? Because then we could forever sing about the Super League doing them a favour. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know. I'd. I'd to be honest, if if that had happened, you know, when Wigan were closer going down, I'd have quite happily seen them go. Um, Leeds, Leeds next fi five fixtures, Kev. Um, Saints at home, Huddersfield at home, Cass away, Toulouse at home and Hull KR away. The panic station's hit if they haven't won by the time they play Toulouse and then Toulouse come and beat them. Yeah. Well, that's it. Listen to this. There's a, there's a lot of permutations down the bottom where, where you've got to lose winning games now. We're deservedly beating us. Absolutely deservedly beating us. Um, and coming close against Wigan and running Wakefield. Who, Wakefield are going well at the minute. Well, mind you, they've only played Warrington in the past two weeks, so it's difficult to say. Um, but Warrington, uh, Wakefield are the best team I've seen that they're totally wicked this season, apart from us. <laughs> they're, they're, the ones, they're the ones who've, uh, who've impressed me the most. Um, so yeah, listen. The, the, unfortunately for them, they're in amongst it. As I say, will they get relegated? Ab absolutely, I don't think they will. Um, I, I really don't. But at the minute, they are in that battle, and if it starts going a little bit pear shaped for them, and as you say, in another four or five games, they haven't won. I mean that they're in. They're in the mire. I know uh, Hetherington's gone over to. Um, to see, to, to try and get a coach from Australia, hasn't it? So it'll be interesting to kind of see what uh, what he comes back with. Well, interestingly, on Friday evening, Saints play Leeds, Castleford play to lose. Um, well, they don't play to lose, they play to win, but... Oh, oh no. Sorry. But, but looking at the points differences... Potentially, Leeds could be bottom. Give it depending well, on depending on score lines if we were to beat them. Yeah, which would be funny end of the evening. 
but but then no, I, but I, then I, equally but then equally we could do it to lose and get beat. Yeah. Oh, of course we could. Of course we could. And that's why the attitude um, needs to be right, and we don't look too far past this game, um, and get this one, and then concentrate on the cup game next week. Correct. Correct. That's it. Don't look too far ahead. Don't. We, we won't. As a club, we won't be looking at Castellan as much. Wigan will be completely out of minds and and Huddersfield and Castleford and stuff like that. Um, just get that first five rounds or so. That attitude back, that application back, that, that defensive single mindedness of teams aren't scoring. And we'll be all right. We should be all right. That's it. If you're going to stick me for a um, a prediction, I'd still stick with Saints by, by 14 or so. I'll go Saints by 26. I think, um, I think we need to get better defensively for that to happen. Yeah, it's a fair comment. Um, on the plus side, Saints go to, get to go to uh, Super League's best stadium. Trademark. Is, I mean, that's trademark. That's saying headingly Super League's best stadium. If you say that much, somebody might believe you. Except it's not better than Huddersfield's, Wigan's, Saints, Hull, FCs. There's five straight off, four straight off. Is that four? Yeah, can't count. Well done. <laughs> You'll be taking your but, socks but what off. Account, but what I can't count is the fact that Leeds have only got three proper stands. <laughs> how can it be? How can it be classed as the best stadium? I think uh, I think that's that's the thing with it. Listen, the, they're completely hamstrung by the the position of that Western Terrace. Um, but yeah, un, until there's until there's a, a lid on that at least. Even Wakefield put a lid on one of their ends. I thought now they make us stand on the side. Um, yeah, until they can put a lid on that and make it a little bit, little bit better. Um, listen, it's great for atmosphere. If that's packed out by Saints fans on Friday, it's great for atmosphere. Um, and it's usually a good day over there. Um, but yeah, it's great to look. It's great to look at the other three stands, but. It's almost like the 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 time forget about that that end, and you can't have the best stadium in the world if one of them ends would look at home at Weldon Road or at Bellevue. My advice would be for Saints fans to wrap up warm. Come kickoff time, it's only going to be five degrees Celsius, uh, a three percent chance of rain, so you don't need your umbrellas, um, but you will need a woolly hat because the wind will be coming in. At a rate of seven miles per hour, Kev, but gusts of up to 16, which could affect Tommy Makinson's kicking. Well, thanks. Thanks for that, Carol Kirkwood. <laughs> oh, right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll catch you on Friday evening for Red V TV's Instant Fan Reaction. Catch you soon. <laughs>